conversation between me, I'm Liz Wade, and this is Adam Navis. Hello, Hello Adam. Hello, Liz. I, I never know where to point, but I'll just do a little dance instead. Um, <laughs> And this is a real conversation between two native English speakers. And today we are going to be talking about or having a conversation about the program Rat Tribe, the story of Beijing's underground cities. And if you have not had a chance to listen to that program in one of our many, many places where many, you can many, find it. Many, many, many places. Yes, you can go to our website at www.spotlightenglish.com where you can follow along with the words to the script and then also listen along. Or you can do the same thing on YouTube as a video and you can follow along there and listen to the audio and anywhere you get your podcasts. So if you have like a podcast platform that you prefer, find uh, Spotlight English on there, download that, and uh, that's how you can listen. But if you want to get your own copy of each script uh, as a PDF that you can print out and keep forever and mark up and highlight and write in little uh, definitions in the margin, we have two ways for you to do that. One is our subscription, which is called Scripts by Email. It's uh, $5 a month, so only about a dollar a week. And that means that every Monday you get your own PDF and a link to the audio program sent directly to your email. Um, and if you want to, uh, if you're on YouTube, you can click that little join button below and find out more about becoming a member. There's four different levels and you can get PDF scripts that way as well. And uh, while you're down there on that join button, if you are on YouTube, could you uh, click the little bell and subscribe and uh, always get notifications for all of our videos? That really helps us out. I said that in all the wrong way, but if you're on YouTube, you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, you know the deal. <laughs> you know what to do. Yeah, exactly. You know, you know what to do. Yeah. You're a smart person listening. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, let's, uh, now we've got that all, uh, housekeeping. Yes. Let's talk about way. rat tribe. Rat tribe. I know. I, I have to say, um, uh, Dan wrote this program and when he told me about this idea he had, uh, I was a little nervous about the name because especially, yeah. I mean, I imagine all over the world, but rat doesn't exact, exactly have the best connotation. Yes. Usually rats are associated with um, disease and uh, decay. Yeah. And just generally gross. I Unhealthy. mean, you don't want to see a rat. But this is, this is not what I think of these people. No, no, right? no. Associating that people. with people is not necessarily yeah. uh, so positive. I, I will say right off the bat, uh, which is a nice idiom for you to use, right off the bat, at the very beginning, I will say I feel uncomfortable referring to um, this group of people as Rat Tribe, but that is what the the name is. There isn't another name because I looked. Yeah. I tried to find another way to refer to these people. Right. Um, well, but let's talk, let's that, unpack where the name, why they come up with that name. Right. Okay. And so I will it's say not about it's, disease or no anything, no. anything actually negative. Right. So this program is about um, people who in Beijing, especially, um, live underground, and it's a it's a much cheaper place or yeah. a much cheaper um, cost of living. Right. And in, a, in a place where cost of living is very expensive. Right. And it's but it's just underground. And I think that's probably where the the rat part comes from right. is that you know rats often like they like the dark, dark spaces, they like you know, yeah. Right. So it really just tells the story of why these people are living that way and um what their living condition is. Maybe you right. want to take it and and yeah. kind of uh, describe why they live underground. Yeah, so in cities around the world over the last probably 20 years, there's been a lot more job opportunities in cities than in rural or country areas. Um, right. 
So a lot of people have moved to cities. Cities have gotten bigger um, because that's where jobs are. Uh, but that also makes the cost of living, and in this case specifically rent or owning mm -hmm. a home, very, very expensive. And in Beijing, they had prepared these underground bunkers in case of war. And so they had all this space and all this room that was originally meant to protect in case bombs fell and you the right. people and the, would be safe. And there's like government bunkers and personal bunkers and like so many bunkers. Yeah. And then the government realized, oh, we the war that was anticipated never came. So then they started to uh, say, okay, they started to turn these into places people could rent. And I don't know if it was unofficial at first. People just started to use them. But... I think it was official at first because, like, these places were not actually meant for people to, like, live. Right. They were meant for people to Which, hide. Well, in live, but only time. under war. Yeah, under for a short time. Right, exactly. So even, like, um, yeah, there's there's not... They converted, like like food storage spaces to yeah very to small room. small spaces that were hard to maintain so there was some moisture which is what a, a word that means like water all around yeah um not like you know you're not swimming you're not in water but it's it's just kind yeah, of humid so there's like kind of water in the air yeah all water around. in the air that's that's a better way of saying because it. it's underground it's underground there's not uh there's not movement of air to keep things dry and of course there's not sunlight to keep things yeah. dry and that was that was something that i thought i think i could i don't need a, a big space to live i'm okay with a small space but without sunlight i don't know if i would like that that was the thing that i thought I don't know. And now, of course, people well, don't live. I mean, people come out okay, during the so day, then, right? Then we're going into like, why do people live in these, right? Yes. Because I don't think it's anyone's first choice. Good point. To live underground. Good point. Um, and I. So why would why would someone these stories? Because of course we we didn't write these stories. I mean, we put them in this program, but there um, there has been a photojournalist who collected these stories and followed um, the people who live down there. Um, these stories are, one, not all the same. It's right. not, you Good know, point. like I... Um, but also, they're all different ages of people in all different parts of their lives with different goals. Yeah. But part of living underneath there is maybe saving the money or just living a simple life. There's one um, couple, a, a story that I read about a couple who they have a big rural farm. They live mm. out in the country, they have a house. Uh, I believe it's even paid off and they enjoyed their life, but they wanted to move to the city and, um, I think they, I, I don't remember exactly, but they maybe have a job in the city and they just wanted to live there for yeah. a little bit. Yeah. So they moved into this underground bunker and that's where they live because they choose to. Yeah. My favorite story was the, the young man who had dreams uh, of, mm -hmm. you know, uh, he needed to do this in order to save money because I think he wanted to do some creative work. But right, he wanted to be an actor. Right, He's, what uh, from Mongolia? Yeah, what immigrant. really got got me was his effort that he put in to not uh, to, to to appear just like everyone else. He was clean yeah. when he when he left. He was clean. He was well dressed. Uh, he, no one would know that he lived underground, and right. I think it made me think about what I judge, how I judge people based on their appearance. Mm -hmm. sometimes negatively and I think oh that person doesn't have nice clothes they must be you know not have a lot of money or I think I might do the opposite though and that's what made me think like oh they they actually look very nice but maybe they live underground I I don't right. know you assume something about them I make assumptions about people well, like we all do yeah this is exactly um I I also read this original story um and I think it mentions it in the program as well, but his parents like 
uh, found out where he lives and his dad cried because he was so yeah. sad that he had to live that way. And, you know, the son is saying, well, no, I'm choosing to do this. Right. I, right. It's, that's really hard, you know, because you're you it's it's go it goes into your assumptions about how someone lives and maybe right. did they choose to live this way or not or anything. Right. It's what, really and what tough that means, when, you know, and the meaning associated with that, especially yeah. with parents and children. Right. Yeah. It's really tough when like you do want to live in the in a bigger city and right. there's just nowhere to live. Yeah. And. Additionally, um, this okay. So this program does talk about the stories of people who live there, but there's also another layer on top of that. In that, these are not actually safe places to live. Right. Um, they, if there were a fire or a flood, there's not a sort of alarm system to make sure people get out, and there's right. not an easy way to empty people out of these. And so actually, um, pretty recently, within the last couple of years or so, the government has said, you can't live there anymore. Right. And they are working on kicking people out. But if people are choosing to live there and they're making these decisions, um, who's right? I don't know. It's yeah, it's difficult. It, and and who's, who's in charge, right? Sometimes, sometimes we, we value the individual choice and we say you know it's amazing that you are following your dreams like there's a great quote at the end of the um yeah. program that talks about the, the, the people who come here and live this way they all have dreams and they're following their dreams and i want to say yes that's great but at the same time i think well maybe the government is is actually looking out for the health of society and yeah. and the and the that's people the, in the that's city. the parent in me Thinking yeah, that, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think, um, but there's something to be said about, um, you know, a place to live that you can afford, that has respect, yeah. and that doesn't, you know, that you don't. Well, have and to... that maybe isn't permanent. Like a lot of those people are not planning on living there permanently. It's just right. a step right now. Right to have that plan. And then I don't who... know. It's a it's a hard thing for me to even think about. I I know that I have. Um, like a certain privilege right. that means that I don't I don't have to experience that, and right. I think it's hard to to um to have an opinion on those things. Yeah, just because. Yeah, I think that's. I don't know. I don't. We're know outside what that. It's you like know, to be living there. And that's what we like to do in Spotlight. We like to tell the stories, and we do like to have opinions and be hopeful. But we also yeah. like to recognize where, when we can stop. And we want to hear from you. You know, if you yeah. have Beijing, we hope there are listeners and watchers uh, yeah. in Beijing or in, in, in different cities. So if you are, if you, if you have lived in a place, we would love to hear from you in the comments. Tell us kind of why you would make that choice. Um, yeah. And what your plan is. Because of course, is. it's not just in Beijing, right? There's lots of, of course. different... And they're not all they're not all underground. Like live, people make right. sacrifices of time and money and um, various kinds to follow yeah. their dreams. And so, how do you balance that? Like following your dream, but also valuing where you are right now, and maybe not living underground. That's a, yeah. that's an okay choice too. Right. So. We would love to hear from you either if you're watching this on YouTube, write a comment below. If you are listening on our website, uh, write a comment on the script page. And uh, you can send us an email even at contact at spotlightenglish.com. Uh, we encourage you to listen to this program if you haven't already. And uh, check us out wherever you listen to your podcasts, on YouTube, on Twitter, on Facebook as we like to say, all over the internet. All, anywhere you are, we want to be. Any social media, um, we are there for you. And uh, thank you for listening. And until next time, listen, watch, practice, and learn. Spotlight out.